so. Ayes 145, no's 1. The vote is passed. Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a good Friday morning. What you just saw was the New York State Assembly passing right to repair, 145 to one. One person voted against it in the entire assembly. It passed through the Senate, and now it passed through the assembly. It used to stall in the assembly. It used to not even get voted on the assembly. Now, it made its way to the assembly. Everybody besides one person voted in favor of it. Now, if the Senate and the assembly both pass a bill, it goes to the governor's desk to get signed into law. So it can still be vetoed by the governor. However, with the amount of bills that were on the docket to be debated and discussed and voted on, there is no way this ever would have made it to the floor if they even had a 1% chance, the 1% idea that maybe the governor would veto it. They just wouldn't waste their time with it. So for the most part, we can just assume at this point that this is going to become law in New York State. This is the first consumer electronics right to repair bill to ever be passed in the United States, ever. And it just happened in New York State. My phone has been vibrating nonstop for the past hour and a half, and it won't stop from people asking what I think of this. So I thought that I would give some thoughts and ideas on this. Above all, what I hope this gets across to so many people who are cynical, that there's no point, why bother, I'm gonna fail, blah, 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 is that if you put in effort it is worth it to continuously pick yourself back up over and over and over and over again. I did one of my first videos discussing what it was like to show up at the legislature around early 2015. And they had lobbyists telling legislators that if I replace a component on your Apple motherboard, I'm converting it to a PC, but I'm misrepresenting it to the consumer as if it's still a MacBook, which is fraud and that's something that I should not be allowed to do. And those arguments were actually winning. I have been failing for the past seven years to get anything passed anywhere, in spite of the fact that I've dedicated my free time uh, prior to the nonprofit, my own personal money to traveling, talking to legislators, everything else. I've been failing for pretty much seven years, and something finally got done. Many people think there is no point to trying because I will fail, and that is true. With many things you try in life, in fact, most things you're going to try in life, you will fail. However, if when you fail, you try again, and then you fail, and you try again, and you look like an idiot, and everybody is laughing at you and saying, why are you wasting your time on that? Why are you being an idiot? Why are you being arrogant? Blah, blah, blah. You continue to push forward anyway, and you learn, you try again, you learn, and you try again, that you actually have a chance of getting something done. Many people will say that I'm not lucky, so I don't have the ability to accomplish this, that, or the other. And true, luck does have a role to play in whether or not you are successful in what you're doing. However, your probability of becoming lucky is directly correlated to how many times you are willing to try at something. Like let's say, are you willing to spend four years trying to fix a single MacBook motherboard before you fix one successfully? Are you willing to try for seven years to get a bill passed before you get a single positive vote? I read a lot of Facebook posts. I read a lot of Twitter posts. I read a lot of Reddit posts where people talk about how, you know, like they argue and they fight and they bicker and they talk about how horrible the world is and how, and, and they insult each other in these horrible ways. Rather than go outside and try to be a part of the change they want to see in the world. I don't lecture my neighbor about how they're a bad person because they disagree with me. That's not been the way that my advocacy for 99% of it has worked. What I try to do is I try to get people personally invested in what it is I do so that I can build the widest possible coalition of people, regardless of all of the other disagreements, that understand why what it is I'm talking about matters, because I make it matter to them. Whether we're talking about doing free repair workshops, where anybody can come into my store and ask my paid employees on the clock the questions on how to fix their own stuff for free and let them use our equipment, or whether I'm doing video walkthroughs on how to understand more difficult or complex circuits so that you can fix your own stuff. For the past eight or nine years on this channel, that's what I've done. My Reddit post history, for the most part, over the past six or seven years, anytime somebody disagrees with this or is kind of confused about it, is usually just saying, okay, well, here, I hear where you're coming from, here's where I'm coming from. 
Rather than stay in my echo chamber, I try to get out of it and engage with as many people as humanly possible to actually get some change. And one of the things that happens is if, if instead of staying home and staying in a hashtag Twitter bubble or one individual subreddit, you go out there into the world and you actually try to do something, something may actually change. And the lesson, the takeaway for all of you, regardless of the issue that you care about, that I hope people understand, is that if you stop tweeting and you stop screaming into echo chambers on Reddit and social media platforms, and you go out there and you try to be a part of the change you wanna see in the world, there's actually a chance of it happening. I've tried to get people personally invested in what it is that I care about and what it is that makes me happy so that you are not just listening to me say, this is why this is important, but you're experiencing it for yourself. That has finally culminated in getting somewhere. I can't tell you how many times I read these comments from people saying, well, not everybody gets to be lucky like you, or not everybody's gonna be able to be successful like you. Not everybody's just gonna be able to easily land on something. And I'm usually an asshole in the comments to these people. And the first thing that comes into my head, hate to say it, it's like, with, I, I, it, it actually shows up with the greatest Sunberg accent is like, th just the how dare you? How dare you start with that assumption? My life has been probably five to 6% success, like 90 to 95% failure. Most of the things that I try, I fail at. And even when I succeed, I succeed after a long period of failure. And then once I finally succeed, I find a way to screw it up again. I can't tell you how many times over the past 15 years that I've looked in the mirror and cursed the person out in the mirror just telling him what an effing idiot, a moron, a dumbass, a jackass he is. I'm just, I can't believe that you did this. And then you saw how it screwed you over and then you were stupid enough to do it again. How did you not see that this person was trying to screw you? How did you not see that when you did this, bad things were gonna happen? Why do you keep making the same mistakes over and over again? Why don't you learn? The amount of, t I spent three to four years trying to fix a motherboard before I got one single fix. I've had days where I lost $30,000. I've had days where I got screwed over by contractors. I've had days where I bankrupted in my entire company. And uh, what I do each time is I pick myself up and I try again. And I try again and I go, well, I guess I learned from that one. And the people around me may laugh at how stupid they think I am. Because in that moment, I was indeed very stupid. And I will be very stupid into the future. And I guarantee there will be days where I look into the mirror and just want to punch it so hard that I break my knuckles in the glass because I'm that frustrated with all the things that I've done wrong in life. What gets you somewhere is not thinking about how other people are lucky or thinking about how screwed over you are, but continuing to pick yourself up each and every single day and keep iterating whatever it is that you're doing. My dad played the movie for me, this movie for me before I turned 10 years old called The Shawshank Redemption. And he told me this movie is gonna be a metaphor for your life and you're not gonna understand it until you're older, but I want you to pay attention to this little rock hammer. I'm gonna spoil the movie, so if you don't wanna have the movie spoiled for free to pause. But you know, the idea that somebody spent 20 years chipping away at a wall with a rock hammer and managed to escape a prison and become a multimillionaire at the end of it, uh, obviously, not, maybe not all of you are gonna become multimillionaires, but the little chipping away every single day, every single day, no matter how much life sucks, at the end of it, everybody else's life still sucked. And his didn't, because he did something about it. As depressing and miserable as it was, every single day, just a little bit of chip, a little bit of chipping, a little bit of chipping. That's what happened here. I started talking about this issue in 2013. It's 2022. And we're not even close to done. It still has to get signed into law. Once it gets signed into law, it will be challenged by these companies in the courts. And that's gonna last a long time. After it's done being challenged in the courts, then they're gonna try to weasel their way out of it. They're gonna say, well, this says we only need to make available the schematics and stuff that we make available to our authorized service centers. And uh, oh yeah, our authorized service centers are the genius bar. So here, have fun with your $999 part to $1,000 computer kind of thing. And we're gonna have to say, no, what we want is what the actual service center gets. You know, the place that you're sending the boards to to be refurbished when the 2011 to 2012 MacBook Pro GPUs have problems. We want the schematics that they get, not the Genius Bar. There's a lot of fighting that's gonna have to be done up ahead. We are not done. This is not over. And I fully expect to have to fight uphill every day step of the way. The thing is, it still is nice to not lose every fucking day. It still is nice to wake up and realize, oh, that thing that probably should have happened seven years ago. Well, you know what? Better now than never. 
And that's cause enough for excitement for me. That's cause enough for celebration for me. I'm happy to see that that happens. And I'm also happy to see that every single one of you were able to put aside your cynicism to try and get something done. As I said, I'm a man who screams into a low resolution camera. No offense framework, all webcams are low resolution, but you get the idea. It's really not me that's doing this, it's groups of people. It's every single person that shows up to these repair workshops, the people that uh, watch my repair videos, that benefit from them, that tell their customers once they're done fixing something, by the way, here's how close you were to this not happening. Because you know who some of those customers are? People in the Senate and the Assembly. It has gotten a lot easier for me to make my sales pitch because I'm often making my sales pitch to people who are already informed about this issue by their family members, by their friends, by their local repair shops. And that's you because most of these people are not watching my YouTube channel. So I want you to give yourself a bit of a round of applause and a pat in the back for actually getting something done. For going outside, for making a phone call, picking up the phone, picking up a pen and paper, typing an email, actually doing something, anything other than fighting on Twitter and Reddit and Facebook and telling your neighbor what a piece of shit they are because they disagree with you and going back and forth in this nihilistic manner on how it's all pointless because you're never going to change anything. I just don't want to hear that nihilistic victim mentality bullshit anymore, that there's just no point to trying and no point to bothering because it's all pointless and what? You guys did something. Take some fucking credit for it. But above all, take the lesson that you learned from this and apply it to every other thing that matters to you. I'm also fully aware of what this is going to mean for me and my future and the way that I'm going to be covered in the future. And as, again, this is no longer a teeny tiny thing that doesn't really matter. This is a serious threat. This is a real bill that is going to get signed into law in a state with over 20 million people and lots of money. There are lots of people that buy iPhones and MacBooks in the state of New York. This is serious and they are not going to let this one go. I've already been called a bully when I show up at state legislatures. They have told legislators that I'm a bully to try to get them to not vote on the bill. You have C.T. Wilson, who has said that I'm a racist because I said that he doesn't understand the concept of source code when he was saying that this bill is asking for source code to be made available when it's not. You have legislators in the state of Massachusetts that were saying that right to repair helps domestic abusers stalk their victims and that it pushes racism and redlining as if a bill that allows you to choose who fixes your own car has anything to do with prejudicial lending when it comes to who gets mortgages. I have a feeling that the way that I am covered in the news is going to change just a little bit in the next three months to two years. But um, we'll see how that goes. It's something, that, admittedly, at the, it's what I signed up for. So, But I'm ready for it. I think it'll be fun. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below. But above all, thank you very, very, very much for all of your help and all of your work. And thank you to the donor who gave a million dollars to the 501c3 and every single one of you that contributed to the 501c4, even a dollar here, 50 cents there, or people that didn't even donate a damn thing, but told their friends, their family members, and their politicians why right to repair matters. You're the reason that this is passing. And I genuinely appreciate having the opportunity to fund the groups of people that were always in the room and doing the work for the past six or seven years that never had the funding to do things properly. To be able to look at those people, the ones that were actually in the room and showing up and doing the work, not the people that were just pretending for the camera or whatever, and being able to say, hey, what would help you Get in your mission to get this passed or to get things moving and for them to be able to present me with a plan and me to be able to actually fund their plans that's making a difference that's something i wouldn't have been able to do without all of you admittedly i'm gonna be honest slightly bigger thank you goes to the dude that chipped in a million that stuff like that does help um, but again everybody truly from the bottom of my heart thank you that's it for today and as always i hope you learned something i'll see you in the next video bye now